Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, and I'm privileged, honored, and completely overwhelmed by Duran Frazier's generosity. There's not a busier human being on the planet right now than Duran, who is uh, taking time out of his ridiculously crazy, busy schedule to podcast and help all of us out with how to make money buying and selling land. Duran, what's up, buddy? How are you things know, going? I, I'm doing great, Mark, but after you told me statistically we're losing listeners, I'm devastated. Why are we losing listeners? Uh, I don't know. We got to get some feedback. So why don't you all go ahead and send a, an email to Mark or an email to myself? My email directly, jfraser at reserveland.com, J-F-R-A-S-E-R at reserveland.com. I will get your personal email. I will read it. I will most likely reply unless it's super mean. And, I'll, <laughs> and I will try to adhere to what you were asking us to do on the show. Yes, yes. And uh, I will do the same. You should have my email, mark at thelandgeek.com or sales at frontierpropertiesusa.com. Um, and yeah, give us feedback. We want to know what are we doing wrong where we're losing so much love out there. I don't know. We had 10,000 listeners from the last episode, and it was down to 9,000. So we're 1,000 listeners less is, is, I mean, 10%? God, that's hurt. That hurts me. It hurts. What, what are we doing wrong here? Yeah, what's going on? So we got to find this out. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So, so Duran, I had a, uh, let me see here. I'm opening up my email. I had a question from Tori in Houston. Tori in Houston, if you're listening, I just want to thank you publicly for the incredibly generous gift of gourmet coffee for my coffee talk episodes. Uh, thank you. It, it smells amazing. I can't wait to uh, to make a fresh pot of it. But um, this better not be this better not be the same Tori that that messaged me and thanked me for my time. Tori, where's my coffee, buddy? I love coffee. <laughs> All right, so Tori wants to know uh, about our business structure going from a dealer to investor, investor to dealer. We talked about this in a uh, in a mastermind session, one of our platinum mastermind sessions. Um, so you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, personally, no, I don't. Do we have an attorney to bring on board here that we can chat with legally? No. Okay, that doesn't help our cause any. Doesn't really help us, does it? Uh, we can, you know, we can, we can, we can talk a little bit about it, and and we do know that some of the basics are that uh, that the tax code when you when you have a corporation, I I, I want to say that the most the the most um, that the the IRS would like to see in and out of a corporation from a buying and selling standpoint to make you a dealer is four transactions per year. This is what I was told by my CPA was that if, if there's more than four, it sort of red flags them if you're trying to go installment sale um, and, right. and uh, investor. And an installment sale is when you are selling the property on a note or what we call terms, right? It's not a cash sale. So for example, Duran has 40 acres in Nevada. He's selling for $30,000. I put $3,000 down and he finances me for $27,000 on a, a land contract and a note, and a promissory note, and I abide by those terms. And the IRS then would consider that an installment sale, where in most cases, now there is an exemption for land, but in most cases you would have to pay taxes on the entire $30,000, even though I've only put $3,000 down. Is that your understanding, Duran? That is my understanding. Now, my CPA is very, sophisticated and was able to find in the tax code the exemption on installment sales for raw land. So you only pay tax as you get those payments. So I make my first payment of, let's say, 
$300 that first month, Joanne has to pay taxes on that $300. The next payment, if I miss it, no taxes. So um, what can happen though is like in the car business, when they do an installment sale, they've got to pay that tax all at once. Um, and it completely changes the economics of it. Uh, I, you know, my first CPA that I had to fire didn't know this, and I was paying, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes that I wasn't, didn't need to, to pay. Do you remember, you remember that? Mm hmm mm hmm yeah, And you know, it wasn't good. Yeah, Mark and I had a, had a couple run-ins with some bad people, but we talked about that in the past, uh, that didn't help us. But you know, I think I've actually had some personal issues with some, uh, you know, we have, you have aggressive, you have, you know, we, you have the fence that, that, that just walk that fine line, and then you have the very um, conservative tax guys. Now, you, you don't necessarily want to find the overly aggressive guy. Um, the guy on the fence is usually pretty good as long as he's educated. The, past, the, 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 the conservative guy can get you in a lot of trouble as well. Um, right. And, yeah, you don't, want, you don't want either extreme. You don't want too conservative yeah. where you're paying too much in taxes, and you don't want overly aggressive where you're calling us from jail. Because that's where Mark's tax guy is right now. Um, he's actually serving a four-year <laughs> sentence, Mark. <laughs> I tell you what, that one guy should be in jail. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Mark and I, and we talked about Mark and I had an attorney referred to us by one of the biggest land guys in, in Nevada. And, uh, and the guy had told us he was a CPA and attorney. CPA attorney, he lied to us, basically. He lied to us. About, yeah. and, I, and I, you know, Mark is a very, uh, like, he, he's, uh, what's naive, I think naive is a great term for Mark. I'm, very trust, naive, I'm I, trusting. Trusting. And the guy told us he was a CPA and attorney. And, I, and me being at the time a 28 year old guy who sort of, you know, didn't really trust just about everyone. I mean, I trusted a lot of people, but this guy, he just red flagged me from the get go. Um, I looked him up. I did a research on the bar and checked to see if he had passed his CPA uh, or if he was a certified or licensed CPA. It was all a lie. And yet the guy was still practicing like he was, which is still possible, right? You can, pra you can say you're an attorney and not, I mean, it's, you know, say, say I say I'm a doctor. Yeah. Right, right. And I am a doctor. You, are, Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And you're the earth clinic guy. I'm a doctor of love. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask my wife. Ask my wife. Right, right. See, this is why we're losing listeners. <laughs> <laughs> True. So anyway, but yes, about, about the installment sale, that, that is uh, very important that you have someone that understands tax code, um, understands what the red flags are to the IRS, um, because there are, I mean, I, I, you, you put... Three CPAs with the same subject in front of them, uh, and they'll all give you different answers as to what you can and can't do. Right, right. So, so, yeah, I mean, and you definitely need to spend at least an hour with your CPA and tell them exactly what you're doing so that they set you up correctly. And you need to have that flexibility where you can straddle the line on different deals between being an investor and a dealer. Some deals you can be an investor and get, to, what, is it 15% long-term capital gains now? Yep. And... uh as opposed to you know ordinary income as a dealer. So you can definitely separate it, um, but you need to have a professional CPA that understands real estate, understands the installment sale exemption with raw land, and uh, doesn't tell you right from the get-go, oh, you gotta take that, you know, you gotta pay tax on that entire amount on that installment sale from day one, even yeah. though you haven't gotten that money. Yeah. And, you know, Mark, I think one of the other reasons we're, we're probably losing listeners is because what we say is very, um, what's the word? It's for advanced seller or sellers that are in that, that uh, at that level of selling multiple properties. And I'm sure a lot of listeners are probably still trying to gather and learn. Right. So if that's the case, if you're not getting a lot of information from us, let us know. Let us know what we need to talk about. Like if you're if if we get 10 emails the same week saying, uh, hey, guys, you guys are talking about advanced stuff that we have no clue what you're talking about and we don't care. Great. We'll change it. We'll talk about, you know, whatever, whatever you guys want to hear about. We'll talk about. Right. Right. So what do you want to talk about right now? What's you know, I, what's what's on our mind? I'll, I'll tell you something that's on my mind. I tell you, because it's on my mind, we, we you know, obviously, I've already given myself a ton of self-promotion on it. But but we, we obviously closed uh, on on escrow with Land Hub. And working on on real property finder, but as I as I start evolving this platform, I realize how broken the marketing system is for land sellers, and how hard it's been for us as land sellers to really get out and be as efficient with our time as possible, uh, without having to hire a ton of virtual assistants to do a lot of work. And so I really see that 
you know, you know, and Mark is involved with this with the Real Property Finder, even though he says he's not. He is secretly involved in the Land Hub and Real Property Finder. But the idea is that we want to make everything really easy for you as the seller to sell land, because if it's just based on how many people look at a particular web page, it doesn't make sense. You need the tools, you need the ability, whether it's an email marketing platform built into Land Hub, whether it's a syndication platform built in Land Hub, you need the tools to do everything under one hub, which is why we have the Land Hub. So I think what's interesting is as I, as I sort of start formulating the ideas and I'm working with my CTO and my, 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 you know, my SEO, my SEO director and my content guy, I start looking at this whole thing and I go, gosh, you know what? Like there is, there is a real need for this in, in, in the U.S. because real estate really is old school. I mean, right. at, in every aspect, it's old school, right? Like, I mean, for, for how long were people using the newspaper and penny saver to sell real estate? And the only difference today is that you can now search online and see the same thing. But there's no real tools to help the seller sell their land, like create a flyer, maybe build a, you know, build a, um, a, a, a real estate a sign for your land. So if somebody's driving around and, and for instance, there's a, there's an area in Nevada that there's, you know, maybe there's like 70 properties for sale. One guy has his, has, has a, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the material is, but a real estate sign that he puts on every single one of his properties. And he, and here's, here's how smart he is. I have great properties there. He has worse properties than I do, but because the signs are up, he'll, he'll get a call from my buyer right. and they'll buy his property. Because yeah. he's taking the time. Here's the guy that Mark and I laugh at. But the guy takes his time to put a stinking sign out on every property when he buys it. And people call him. So there's all these tools that we're going to create under, under one system. So, But going back to it, it's all about marketing and eyeballs. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this, this business can be broken down in, into really two parts. First one is deal flow, right? You got to buy property first pennies on the dollar. You got to make your money on the buy. Then you've got to go to your platforms. Reserveland.com is not a platform, but Land Hub is a platform. So if I'm looking for, if I'm, if I'm going to look for a piece of property and I do a search, odds are Frontier Properties USA or Reserveland.com is not going to have the pool with Google because we just, Duran and I, as as owners, don't have the time to constantly be throwing out content every day on our individual websites. But that's why we pay money for platforms like a land hub or ruralpropertyfinder.com or Land Watch, Lands of America. They've are already done it. And so, if there's tools out there that can leverage your time and help you sell that property and market that property more effectively and more inexpensively because you do have to factor in your time that that's really what you want to do but you need to do it consistently um and market it consistently it's got to be something that is done at least weekly wouldn't you say i agree um you can't just put an ad out there and then let it sit i mean you got to tweak it right yep. even if you pull the, the ad down and then put it back on it it does a lot of things for the ad itself. Like I think some of the some of the websites will tell you how long the, the ad's been been uh, live on the market. It'll say 200 days. If somebody sees 200 days, that's gonna red flag immediately. Why hasn't this property sold if it's such a good deal? Right. So um, and you know, Mark, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, deals this week. Um, I think you closed a few deals. I know I closed a few deals. I got a little discouraged because it was going to Labor Day, and you know I didn't put a Labor Day scale together like Mark did. You know, and he's about, he's got all these great you know email emailing tools. Um, in fact, I, Mark, I almost bought one of his properties. I was so excited for him. Anyways, <laughs> so so uh, this past week, I actually closed a few deals, um, and I was pretty excited. I closed uh, three three separate deals over the weekend. Um, two. Yeah. So yeah. So tell us about these deals. Um, one, I sold a beautiful beautiful ten acre parcel uh, for twenty seven thousand. Was this the Humboldt River Ranch? Correct. Okay. Beautiful. Um, you know, t t 10 year note, um, uh, you know, it's just a small amount down, but 10 year note, uh, but, but a solidified buyer, um, we've talked over the phone several times and he's getting a smoking deal. You want, you will not find a 10 acre parcel. You probably have never found a 10 acre parcel in that, in that, in that, uh, Humboldt River Ranch for, for less than 40,000 ever in that subdivision. Wow. So, so I have, I have one other, one other additional 10 acre parcel there. If you guys are interested, make sure to call me. 
uh, or email me jfraserreserveland.com. But no, it's a it's a beautiful property. It has it has reservoir views. It's got power. It's got roads. It's got everything you need, and um, and it's got stunning views. And it's kind of tucked up. I'm sure there's plenty of wildlife and deer and stuff up and up because it's a little bit in the foothills, but still a great property. Um, but again, two wheel drive access. It's a perfect property. So sold that for twenty seven thousand. Um, I don't recall what my buy was, but I think it was close to three grand. That's not a bad return. Not a bad return. So um, now going back to it, you know, somebody may go, oh, I'm not, I'm not paying 27. You paid three grand. Well, guess what? I'm still selling it for 50% of what the property's worth. Right. Yeah. So it's still a good deal. I mean, just and, because you buy it right doesn't mean you sell it wrong. Yep. And here's the other, here's the other kicker. Zero percent interest, folks. But that's like paying 20 grand. Right. You know, I mean, people would say you're crazy. Zero percent. Well, guess what? I, for me, it's, I believe it's a great deal, but an even greater deal is when you're selling at 0% interest and the buyer is excited. Right. How many, how many years? 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. So now you, you don't do a cash discount or you do a big cash discount? No, I give them, I give them a discount. I mean, if he offered to pay it off, I'd give him a 10% discount along the way. Okay. Okay. So I don't put that in my ads um, necessarily, but, but on the ad itself, if they did a seven, a five year or a three year note. Right. I, would give, I would give them a 10 or a 20% discount on the total note. Okay. So, so I, you know, I mean, to me, uh, you know, I believe that, 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 you know, getting, you know, getting the return in three years, uh, you know, is, is, is fair enough. And obviously the return in that case, those, those of you who are, who are listening, I mean, if you're taking it through, if you're three grand and you're making 20 grand, that's a great return in three years. So, right. right. And I, you know, I've been experimenting, I've been trying to do different, Financing structures where, you know, I'll put in, you know, 50% discount if they pay it off within the year. If I want cash just for that property, it's a smoking deal. Uh, in fact, it might be too good a deal where the buyers are like, what's wrong here? So sometimes that's, you know, that can be, uh, you know, your pricing can actually be coupled with your marketing. So your price actually sends a signal to the market. If it's too low, it kind of sends a signal to the market that, well, maybe it's not valuable at all. Why should I even buy it? As opposed to if it's too high, you know, and someone can't just, you're just limiting your buyer pool there. But you definitely want to price the properties in a way that is, is you know, it's, it's a multi-price mindset, right? So you want to get everybody along the way, but in, in the sense that, um, you've got room to move. So, uh, you know, you might price that same $27,000 property, but then add some more value to it where Duran might say, hey, look, I'm going to help you become a Nevada resident and save on state taxes. And then he might actually take things away and sell it for $20,000 and just say, hey, look, you know, uh, you, this is all you get with the property is this, this, and this but you, I'm not going to help you become a Nevada state resident. Something like that. Does that make sense, Strand? hundred percent. I think, I think again, whatever is conducive to your financial strategy structure. I mean, if you need the cash, mm. you're going to be as aggressive as you can to get the cash back. Right. Right. So you're, you're going to offer them a fair amount of money or a fair discount. That's going to say, Hey, these guys want to sell. They know that we have some cash in the bank and we'll make a deal happen. I had a foreclosure happen and I told the guy several times, Hey, look, we, you know, the note was 25 grand. You paid, let's say, like say, let's say you paid five. I'm right. willing, the foreclosure is going to cost me 2000, but I'm willing to sell it to you for what I know I can sell the property for cash right now, which is 4,000. So, right. or 5,000. So if I can sell that property for 5,000 cash right now, but I still have two grand in foreclosure fees, my net will be three grand. So it makes more sense before the foreclosure to get four grand. Right. So, so you, you've got to always be thinking as to what is, you know, the highest and best, you know, return on investment um, when it comes to that property. Right. But if you sold that same 10 acres, let's say for 6,000, right, it'd sell tomorrow. Yeah. How, however, you'd be signaling the marketplace, it's not a very valuable property. Mm -hmm. I mean, where are you going to find 10 acres with power and a road and mountain views and water views for $6,000? Even though you're making 100% on your money, you're, yep. you're signaling to the market. It's just, you know, maybe there's something wrong with this property, right? 
Yeah, or 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 you always got to assess the market, right? Like we talked about it in the last episode, was that if we don't assess the market correctly uh, and realize that there's there, you know, there was just an auction, there was 20 other properties up, I'm gonna wait a year, right? Uh, which is what I'm doing for for some of this stuff. That property, there's none. There's nobody else got 10 acre parcels there, but I, but me, I, but me. Um, and so I have two beautiful 10 acre parcels that nobody bid on and they were beautiful. I don't know why nobody bid against me. It's really bizarre. Um, so, you know, I'm the one controlling that market. If I decide the property's worth 27 grand and someone pays for that, that's what it's worth. Well, exactly. I mean, exactly. I mean, a, a, a property or any assets worth what that's a buyer and seller pay. are willing to, to agree on. I yeah. mean, that's, that's the value. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's great. So but, that, that but, was the first but hold on, but hold on, yeah. just to interrupt you. But that said, that doesn't mean that you sell for six grand. That's what it's worth, right? That seller could just be desperate. So, and want a quick return and realize that, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I need cash today. Um, that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily give you a, a value of what, the, what that property should be worth. Um, so, so don't always think, well, well, he paid six grand. That's what it's worth. No, if you may have undervalued your property by 20 grand. So, right. yeah, I mean, you've got to do your research. You've got to know what is this property worth. And the way to do your research is, you know, find some property that's, property. that's sold in the last year. That's, you know, similar property, uh, a good comparable sale. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. So Mark, have you done any deals this week or you have not? Uh, I just did a deal today on uh, my 1.25 acre parcel in Lake Mojave Heights Estates. That's my 17th sale in that subdivision. Um, I bought 19 lots, so I'm pretty happy about that. That that deal's taken a little longer than anticipated to sell out, um, but it's selling. You know, it's give us the numbers, Mark. We're numbers. We're we're all the fans here are all about the numbers, buddy. Yeah, so I'm I'm buying those properties. Uh, don't lie, don't lie, Mark. For a thousand, and I'm selling them for five. On My, Mark, you on are such terms. a liar. I'm not Mark, lying. Mark bought all those properties for for a hundred dollars each. No, and no. he does not want to tell the listeners how good a deal he got. No, you know the property's really good. It's good property. Uh, it's got good road access. It's 15 minutes from Kingman. Mountain views. Um, power might be coming to the area. There's really good comps in that area. Ten thousand dollars sale, thirteen thousand dollars sale. This same property was selling for thirty thousand at the uh, the height of the market. When you say might be coming to the area for power, is that in parentheses? That's in parentheses. It might be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't advertise power's coming, but that's that's the word on the street. But look, you know, it's it's really inexpensive. Um, you know, the big problem is that, and the reason I'm selling it so inexpensively is there's a huge water issue. You can't hit water unless you're going to spend $10,000 uh, to dig a well. So you got to haul in your water. And to get these things to move, I got to I got to sell them on easy terms. Dude, if you drink Capri Suns, you don't need water. That's true. You, yeah, that's true. But then you'll get diabetes and nobody wants that. That's true. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So it's all good. So tell us about your second deal. Uh, second deal was a cash deal. I don't okay. really want to talk. I don't want to talk about this one. <laughs> you don't want to talk about it? I'm just kidding. Was it a good, um, was it a good deal? It wasn't a great deal. I, I made a little bit of money. It was a it was a quick cash deal. I made about uh, I paid for the property about a thousand bucks. I made about I sold it for about seventeen hundred. Oh, um, oh my gosh. Yeah, it wasn't a great return. But you know what's funny is we go oh my gosh in 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 a couple I, of months. I know any other in, any other industry they're like what that's great. Yeah, what are you complaining yeah. about. 70% return, I think I'll take it. Right. So that's that's what it was. I'm not very happy with it. But you know what? That's why I'm not a big fan of cash. Because in this right. market, in this market, although we're printing $8,500 billion per month in open-ended currency creation, we we still don't have a lot of money going toward land. Um, you know, it's it's all going toward the residential real estate market. Right. Um, and we're, we're I, like we talked about before, I think that's going to, that the, the land market's trailing that a, a little bit and that we're going to start seeing an uptick a bit. Oh yeah, the market's going to get stronger, you know, um, especially as people, uh, you know, well, you know, is tied to inflation as well. You've got a you've got a, a great hedge against inflation with raw land and gold. I mean, yeah. that's just that's traditionally what it's always been, and with inflation so low, um, and you know, the residential market coming back, uh, you know, it land's going to take it's it's going to it's it's going to take some time. It's like the the long tail, if you will, 
of uh, of real estate where you got yeah. residential at the head and then uh, commercial, industrial, um, then you got farmland, and then you've got what we do with our all land. And and not to get political, but the Syrian rebels, they need land too, you know? I mean, we're Every, everyone needs land. We're funding them. I mean, we might as well just have them start buying property here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, but, you know, that's, we, you know we're, I know you're joking about this, but, you know, tapping that international market is fantastic. I get a lot of Canadian investors, a lot of Canadian investors. If you're not marketing to, to Canada, you're missing a big opportunity. Big. Uh, yes, I need to start today, actually. I, I, you know, we've talked about this, haven't we? No, we haven't. I'm going to start marketing today. Oh, yeah, especially the Southwest. It's freezing there. Yeah. Where do you yeah, think I, they want to go? I, the Southwest, Southwest in West, Florida. Van Vancouver? Yeah. Dude. Man, Vancouver's nice, but. Where, where else would you want to go but Vancouver, baby? Whistler in the wintertime? Kidding me? No, I know. Vancouver Island in the summertime. Folks, if you haven't been to Vancouver Island in the summertime, please, just if you live on the West Coast, take a drive up there. Get up there. Go check out a little town called Tofino, uh, Tofino, Canada. It's a little surf place, but gosh, it's beautiful. Tofino? Tofino, T-O-F-I-N-O. -I, I think you're making up cities now. I promise you. It's so beautiful. A uh, little story for the listeners. You'll like this one. Uh, back, back when I was 27 or 28, my Range Rover that I that I thought was a really smart uh, purchase was horrible purchase. Um, it, it, the transmission went out um, just under 50,000 miles, and so I got a rental car. So I drove from San Diego. Um, they gave me a rental uh, LR3, brand new LR3 rental. I drove from San Diego to uh, to to Fino, Canada, in this thing. Packed my surfboard in my car, and my wife and I had a freaking blast. I I drove up there. I surfed all these little surf spots in Canada. Um, wow. The water temp was the same temperature when I left uh, San Diego as it was when I got up there. So wow, yeah, it was pretty neat. The, the warmer currents run up there in Canada, but a little surf down. But yeah, if you get a chance to go to Canada, ah, oh, I love that place. You're living the dream. You want, you want to know what? You love Canada, but Canadians love our land, as do other international investors. So you know they do. They do, eh? They do, eh? They do. <laughs> <laughs> they really, yeah, exactly. It's cold, man. It is cold up there. It, you know what? San Diego, 83 degrees today. Beautiful. I surfed last night um, right in front of my house. It was absolutely gorgeous. Water was 70 degrees. Air temp was 75. And guess what, Mark? What? I'm gonna do it. I'm doing. I'm gonna do it again in a couple hours here, buddy. Are you really? Yep. That's just mean. I know. It's just mean. You're just... looking. At, you look like you're sweating a little bit. Yeah, I am sweating. It's warm. You got eight fans running in there. In your me in your mega mansion. Yeah, and it's still not helping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my yeah. yeah, my little casita office. It's, it's warm, and I'm I'm too cheap to put the air down. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about tips of the day, buddy. All right. Yeah. What do you got? No, you start us off, buddy. I don't have any. I got I got. I'm searching the internet right now for one. Your my my tip of the day. Uh, all right. I'll tell you my tip of the day. It's a book. It's a book. And uh, I'm reading it now because I don't know about you, I'm really disorganized, really distracted all the time. And it's come to a point now where it's become a, a big problem in my life. So I'm reading Organize Your Mind, Organize Your Life, Train Your Brain to Get More Done in Less Time, Paul Hammerness and Margaret Moore. Um, and because I'm so distracted all the time, I don't have time to read. So I'm doing this on Audible, uh, an audio book. I'm listening to the book, and uh, it's fantastic. So I know you're not distracted. I mean, we've talked about this, but I'm constantly distracted. So uh, the book's really helping. That's my tip of the day. If you're like me and you have the attention span of a ferret on a double cappuccino, then <laughs> start uh, reading or listening to this book. What do you wow, got? wow, wow, wow. Mark, I'm so sorry for you, buddy. I'll pray for you because you got a lot of problems. Um, <laughs> I, I don't read It's books. only a problem if you don't recognize it. You're right, you're right. I don't read books, folks, because I don't know how to read. Um, but I can, I can write okay. A um, couple things. One, one of, my, one of my favorite sites that, that actually has a lot of information from a lot of interesting people in, the, in this country and around the world 
is called off-grid.net. And I don't think I've given that site out before. Off-grid.net. Okay. And they've and and there's a book um, by by this gentleman um, whose name happens to be um, Nick Rosen, and Nick Rosen owns that site. And it's basically just kind of like a kind of like living off the grid, but it kind of gives you a lot lot more insight into like what you can do with your land and how you can utilize it. Kind of giving you in your, maybe giving you some creative aspects of the highest and best use of my property. Um, so there's that, and then and then another another site I have. Oh, oh, so so re, if you get a chance, that book I actually did read it. I don't read very often, but I read that book. It's called Off the Grid right. um, by by Nick Rosen. Um, so Nick Rosen owns the site. Nick and I are, are have gotten in touch before, and I would say we're we're acquaintances, and and uh, we're getting together here soon. He's from the UK. Um, the other one I have is called seedsnow.com s e e s e e d s n o w seedsnow.com a, a great a great place to buy organic non gmo non hybrid um seeds for your garden so if you're if you're even if you're not if you Let's haven't bought this. if you haven't bought land yet um but you're planning to and you want to maybe build an organic garden but you don't know how to start it's a great place to go um get your seeds the seeds aren't expensive um, I don't own a part of this company, so nor do I. I, own a I don't of, believe you, uh, but off grid. All right. So those are two little websites to check out. I like them. I've used them both. Uh, they're both full of information. One is full of seeds. I'll tell you what. This, this seeds now site is really a nice site. You guys should go to this site just to see how they're marketing themselves. Um, I, I bet this is a Shopify.com site. If I had to it, bet, it, it is a Shopify site. Yeah, I can tell. It's. Shopify is nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's expensive though. How? No, nah, it can't be too bad. It's not. I mean, it's not too bad, but it. I'll tell you what. This isn't so bad. Yeah. This looks great. Yeah. So, um, seedsnow.com, offgrid, off-grid.net. I know you've you've talked about off-grid.net in a past yeah. podcast. So, but I'll, I'll give it to you anyways. Okay. And then, Fair enough. Uh, and then my book. Um, I do have another tip. Um. Thank you, Jeff Axton, uh, because you've saved me money. Instead of using wegolick.com, you use Geico. No, I use <laughs> Craigslist gigs. And uh, in a rural area in Texas, um, I thought, oh, you know, they're not, you know, no one's going to respond to my Craigslist ad. I had five people respond within two hours, all of them legitimate. Um, to go out and take pictures and shoot video for me in uh, in that area of uh, Mineola where I'm buying the subdivision. So uh, it was great. So okay. Jeff, oh, thank you. What's, what's the website called? Uh, you've heard of it. It's called craigslistgigs.com? No, Craigslist. You go to Craigslist and you go to the gigs area. Oh, I didn't know they a, had a Yeah, you post a gig. What? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm gonna do this for everything. Wow. Yeah. Craigslist. I just saw one here. I'm San Diego. Plumbing service technician. I'm in. How much? Did I, I'll, what do you need? I'll fix it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't have to worry about the safety issue because they're going out and doing it. And wow. uh, it's fantastic. This so, pretty... uh, wow. She, she already took, her, she took the picture. She's going to go out next week again and uh, take some more. And I'm paying 50 bucks as opposed wow. to, I think I would pay 79 on uh, wegolook.com. And you know they're not using uh, professional uh, cameras either, like uh, this person was. So that's my other tip of the week. So, Duran, any any last parting advice, words, wisdom? Um, no, I don't have any. I don't have any wisdom, Mark. My wisdom is slowly fading. What are we What are we going to talk about next week to get more listeners? I, they need to talk to us so we know they what to need, talk yeah, about. They, you know what? They need to talk to us. Tell us what to talk about. Uh, Tori in Houston, thank you again. Uh, I will be completely wired tomorrow morning when I do my Coffee Talk segment, which reminds me, if you're not going to YouTube and looking up uh, The Land Geek uh, and subscribing to the Coffee Talk videos, go do that. And if you're not going to thelandgeek.com and you haven't downloaded for free the Passive Income Blueprint, go do that. And you know what? Give Duran some love, will you? Please. Yeah, don't go to YouTube.com and find me. 
Go to my LinkedIn and find me. Go to reserveland.com. Go to the land hub, landhub.com. Go to real property finder. But you know what? I don't need you to look at me on a YouTube video because I look way worse than Mark does on YouTube. <laughs> Duran's is shy. <laughs> He's just shy. Anyways, uh, go there, reserveland.com, landhub.com. And you know what? If you want to buy some wholesale property, give me some love as well. FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Obviously, Duran's doing better than me. at three sales last week. So it's my turn uh, to do that. So next week, we will be uh, hopefully talking about exactly what you want to uh, hear from us and uh, make it an extraordinarily profitable week. Send out those deals. Hey, Dat, if you're listening to this, I'm talking to you right now. Make some more offers, buddy. All right. This is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Jan. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.